Hey guys, welcome back. So in today's video, I'm going to discuss pod topology spread constraint. So basically spread constraint controls how your pods are going to be spread across uh, what Kubernetes defines as a failure domain. So a failure domain can be anything. It can be a physical region in AWS, like you have a Kubernetes cluster that spreads across two regions. So your one region is one failure domain, your other region is another failure domain. Similarly, uh, coming to at AZ level, so each AZ could be defined as a failure level, right? So that's because if you <coughs> if you talk about Cube API server, uh, to it uh, all the po all the nodes in a cluster are in a flat topology, right? So Cube API is not aware of whether your cluster spreads across regions or AZs, multi AZs. So Cube API server is not uh, concerned about that, right? So you actually have to basically provision something in your pod that it spreads across each node equally, right? So that's what spread constraint do. So it makes sure that pods are spread equally, I mean, to the best uh, of uh, uh, efforts, right? So the best of, it's not, I mean, it does not guarantee that your pods will be spread across uh, equally across all your nodes, right? But it makes the best effort to spread your pods equally across all your nodes. And that's what spread constraint do. All right, so <clears throat> as I am going to show you, so cubes get node. So I actually have a three node cluster. Uh, one is your master node and the other two are worker nodes, right? So what I'm going to do is I am, so kubectl, um, what? I need to label node agent zero as so i'm going to give a label to the each node so that label would be zone and suppose this is zone a right so this can be i mean if you're running in aws this can be your availability zone a right and similarly i am going to give label zone b to my other node so as you can see i've labeled my nodes now here i actually have a pod definition Right, you can see it's a basic pod definition where I'm actually creating a pod and that is nothing but an Nginx pod, right? Using Nginx image. So let's just edit this file. And here I'm going to add pod uh, uh, spread constraint, topology spread constraint. All right, so I'll just copy that from the uh, Kubernetes documentation. I'll put the link for the documentation where it is exactly, where you can find it, right? I'll just copy this and then I'll explain you what it is actually doing. Oh, yeah. So you can see topology spread constraint. This go goes under the spec. So this is pod definition. So this goes, uh, I mean, even if you are like running it in a deployment, again, it will go under the spec uh, template and spec, right? For, uh, for a deployment. So topology spread constraint, then you define a max Q. So max Q is the degree till which uh, basically what you call. Uh, so basically it's a degree to which your pods can be unevenly distributed. So for example, I tell you, so suppose you have like three nodes, right? And you have say eight pods. So how would you want your pods to be distributed? So first would be like, you would schedule like two pods on each. So your six pods are e evenly distributed across uh, three nodes. Now you're remaining with two uh, two pods, right? So if your max Q is set to one, so what Kubernetes will do is it is going to do like three, three, two. So it will schedule three pods on one node, three pods on another node, and remaining two pods on the remaining node, right? So that's your, that's your eight pod. But if suppose my max Q is two, right? So in that case, what Kubernetes can do is the remaining last two nodes, uh, not last two pods, actually this is very confusing. So what it can do, it can do like four on one node and then remaining four, like two and two on the other two nodes. So that's because that's the difference. Four minus two is your max Q, basically two is your max Q, right? So that's the degree of unevenly distribution what Kubernetes can afford. So that's what max Q defines. So in uh, in my case, I've just set max Q to one. So suppose if I have like eight 
eight pods and I have three nodes. So it will be three, three and two, right? So the max Q or the basically the difference between the, the, the degree of unevenness is just one. Then I need to define a topology key. So this is actually the label. So uh, we defined a label called zone. So this is going to be my topology key. Then there is one, uh, uh, what you call, uh, uh, property called when unsatisfiable. So this is implemented when, when this condition is not satisfied, right? So in that case, what I have said is do not schedule. So what I'm telling Kubernetes is that if this particular topology is not satisfied, just do not uh, schedule my pod, right? So it will stay in pending state. Uh, there is another uh, property which is uh, schedule anyway. So in that case, what happens that when Kubernetes is not able to find a suitable node, it schedules it anyway on any node, right? Then it is the label selector. It basically tells what pods are going to go in uh, in the spread constraint. So basically it's the same. So I, I have label foo bar on my pod. So similarly, I'm matching those label and then the container definition. All right. So let me save this, right? And clear the screen, ctl, .yaml. so pod is created. Wants. So let's see where this pod is scheduled. So this pod is scheduled on my agent one, right? Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go inside pod definition.yaml. I'll just change the name of the pod. And run it again. So another pod is created. Let's look at where that pod is gone. So that pod uh, by topology spread constraint, it has gone to agent zero. Let's schedule another pod. Pod three. Let's run, clear the screen. And that has again gone to agent one. And let's schedule the last pod. Pod and run. so now if I do so you can see four pods are evenly distributed across two nodes two on each node right now uh, in order to show you that if I say remove the labels so kubectl uh, get node, not get node, kubectl uh, label node and node name agent zero and to remove the label basically we can simply do zone minus so this is going to remove the label. Similarly, I'm going to remove it from the other, right? And now if I go into my pod definition and try to schedule a fifth pod, right? So as per topology constraint, it says do not schedule. So if it does, if it does not find any node with this key, it will not schedule it. And this is what we are expecting to happen. So let's just quickly do apply. Pod is created. kubectl get pods. And this pod is in pending state. You can see no node has been assigned to it, although only eight seconds have passed, but we clear the screen and run it again. You can see 18 seconds and still this pod is in pending state, right? Still in pending state. But if we go into pod.yaml and this is any 
way i think it is with capital s let me just check this is capital s so schedule anyway right so now let me save this and try to right and we have a problem what what updates matching what five is in O? Oh. we didn't change the name oh yeah so this is going to be part six clear the screen pod is created let's look at kubectl and you can see pod 6 it is creating so but it you can see it has got a node right so it has been scheduled any which way uh, although it was not able to find a topology constraint with a key zone because we have removed the zone label from the nodes but still it was able to schedule the pod right and you can see the pod 5 it's still in pending state so it has still not got any uh, any node. So that's what basically topology for spread constraint is. I hope you got the, a brief idea about it. Uh, it is mostly you would see combined with uh, pod affinity and anti-affinity. Anti uh, I've seen that a lot. But this is, I mean, in itself quite, uh, uh, what you call, potent enough basically to do scheduling, like properly scheduling your, scheduling your pods across multiple nodes which are spread across multiple AZs, multiple regions, right? So yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all I wanted to cover for this video. I hope you guys like this video. Please do subscribe to the channel before leaving and thank you for watching.